Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecture Lab, introducing abbreviations that are extremely common and that we'll be using uh, here and there throughout the rest of the course. So, uh, we've been very explicit about a lot of things uh, that are not actually expressed that way in the literature. And the reason is because it's a, it's a pain to actually write it or typeset it. And then also, everyone knows what it is, so we don't really have to put it in. Just to give you an example. So we've been writing our lambda functions like this. Lambda x in d sub e uh, ran of x to mean something like x ran. Now, of course, this is itself an abbreviation. Um, in strict sense, so is this. But in the literature, what people will do instead is just write lambda x with a subscript e. ran of x. And that will mean the same thing. Going even further, people will often remove the subscript. And we end up with lambda x ran of x. This applies also for, uh, for, for uh, functions with multiple arguments. So where we would write, we have been writing something like this. where we specify the domain of um, where we specify the domain of each argument right. a lot of times uh, people will just something write will write something simpler like this and notice that the dot goes away and you're just expected to know that this <laughs> is a dot here, that this is part of the value condition of this. Sounds like a nice Kansas storm is coming in. So, of course, we can write that even more simply by something like this. And that is a simple way to abbreviate uh, domain conditions. And we do this for all sorts of functions. So we've seen how we can abbreviate our lambda functions. But we can also abbreviate types. As we've seen, types can get really convoluted when we start making them very complex and they have a lot of arguments that have functions and so forth. So to take an example, ET, ETT, and this is just a forest of brackets and so forth. Now when we have a complex type that itself is composed of two simple types, then we can abbreviate that in a very straightforward way. So for instance, ET, we can write it like this, or we can just write it ET. And so this would become ET, ETT. Uh, and that works out pretty well. So or to take another example, E, E, T, right? we can abbreviate this type you know, to its simple types, E, E, T. And everyone will understand exactly what that means. Now this works as well for the lambda expressions. So if we have a function of type E, T, um, and then we have something like the, If we have a meaning like that, we can abbreviate the lambda expression, lambda f of type et, a little bigger, type et, and the rest will be the same. And of course, usually people won't even write that much, they'll just write lambda f. So we end up with you know, a much simpler way of writing these expressions, and uh, both of those will be extremely useful. Now, the third one that we want to introduce involves um, the equals one. Right? So we've seen it a little bit, I've mentioned it here and there. We do it here, where when we have a, an equals one, when uh, anytime you have an equals one, essentially, people will write it out. So to take a, a simple case, like predicate modification, 
we have you know, lambda x, uh, cat of x, and we have lambda x, uh, red of x. We want to combine those to make a red cat. Well, according to our predicate modification rule, that would give us something like this, lambda x in type E, cat of x, and, or equals one, sorry, and red of x equals one. Now, nobody writes those equals ones, and instead we employ cat of x to represent cat of x equals one. Uh, which, again, it's not strictly fair to change what this abbreviation means, but everyone does it. Everyone knows exactly what you mean. So if you and so what you end up with is this lambda x, cat of x, and red of x. And of course most people don't even write that much. So we end up with lambda x, cat of x, and red of x. And that works out as well. Everyone knows what that means. And this works for quantifiers as well. So when we say uh, every cat is red, right, we don't necessarily write uh, cat of x equals one, we just write cat of x and red of, you know, if cat of x, then red of x. And this actually matches the predicate logic form a little bit more closely, but um, again, we have to switch what this abbreviation means. Um, but everyone does that. Right? So, and a lot of people don't realize that they actually do it. So you can do it from here on out, and uh, I, won't, yeah, I won't take off points for it. But just to be clear, you want to understand you know, why you're actually abbreviating in this way. So when we talk about the meaning of every, it takes two functions of type et, which we can write like this. And then we can write it like this. And this would be the meaning for every. Again, it's an abbreviated form with a lot of little tricks that uh, you'll need to be aware of. But now that we've under, you know, now that we've investigated what those elements of meaning are, we can write them out of everything. But we have to know that they're there. And so these are three common abbreviations, right? For lambda expressions, for types, and for those pesky equals ones. So we get rid of all those, we write them a little bit differently, and now our expressions are going to look much more like the ones we see in the literature. Uh, whether those should be the ones that we see in the literature is an issue of debate that nobody's having. But we'll have a, a nice, uh, nice and clear kind of way of writing these things. These will be shorter to write. They'll be cleaner on the paper. Uh, and now that we know what they stand for, we can use them. So we can use them from here on out.